and welcome back to uh, MGL uh, where we're covering the requirements of the new City and Girls 918903. We've already covered phase one. We're now looking at what is entailed for phase two. So if you can remember correctly, there was only certain areas that need to be covered for phase one and it is the same for phase two. So we're going to jump into this one and go through what is required. So one of the things that I'd like to say as well, if you find it or you enjoy this video and found it useful in any way, please remember to drop a like, leave a comment and even subscribe and help support the channel. Right, so just like before, the 9189 is the new apprenticeship scheme. It's based in phases now, not years, and it is split into four phases. The first three phases is what we are covering are your core content, your plumbing qualification. And your fourth phase is the final pathway where you pick whether you want to do environmental technology, natural gas boilers, oil, or even solid fuel appliances. When it comes to the assessments, just like before, sorry, I caught, I need, caught myself out there. Uh, yeah, when it comes to the assessments, the candidates must not take any assessments unless they are registered. But if you already got to phase two, a lot of this is already covered. So we can move on from that. Now, one of the things I always like to reinforce, though, is resits and retakes. Unlike before, where you could keep taking an exam or an assessment as often as you liked to get the qualification that you required, Sitting Guilds have revamped this. It's not just for the new um, apprenticeship, it's also the new diplomas and the qualifications they're working on. You are now limited to the amount of retakes that you can take. Now, when it comes to the exams or assessments, if you fail your first go, you can retake it within 14 days of that first referral. If you fail it on your second go, you cannot retake it until after 60 days where you will allegedly get retrained and everything else before you did this. Then if you fail on your third go, you've again got your fourth go, which must be taken within 14 days. And if you fail that fourth assessment or exam, you must go all the way back to the beginning of that phase. Hence the reason now why they've removed phases uh, remove years and turn them into phases because you might be on phase one or two for two years or even phase three for two years we don't know so here's the key important thing that i was just talking about we just don't know now again when it comes to the assessment phase one we've already covered so give me a little pointer here so phase one we've already covered in the previous video if you want to go back i will leave a link at the end of this video for you to go to it uh, but now in phase two, this is where we're moving to. You have two to work through to get to the end of this phase. You have one exam, online exam, and a set of assessments, which we will cover at the end of this presentation. Right, what do you need for this part of the course, this phase? You still need book one, but you also now need book two from the City and Guilds. These are both very important books. You do need these books, so I do say buy them. You can get them from Amazon or any good bookstore or even direct from City and Guilds. The college I work for at the minute, they sell them in their shop. So I tell all my students, all my apprentices to get these books. They're very important books. Also, at this level, you will need your water regulations. Again, can be get from Amazon uh, or direct from the water undertakers, RASP, and they can order them directly. And again, though, in our shop, they have copies for sale. All right, so phase two or year two, fingers crossed. Hopefully you haven't been put back. We finish off science. Now, in phase one, you did a few set areas of science. This is the last part of science. So there's a few areas that you've got to cover but you will finish off science for phase two. You will not be carrying science over to phase three. Cold water, you're not covering again. We covered a small bit of cold water in phase one. 
we are only covering a couple of parts as you can see phase one would have covered part one but two three and five are covered in phase two the rest is covered in phase three so again for the tutors out there don't go mad and think oh yeah it's easy we'll just teach them everything there is to know about cold water no you will ruin them for the exam they'll have to you won't cover it all anyway because you've got limited time to do this. So bear this in mind, you only need to cover what's on this section. Same with hot water. We'll finish off a few bits on hot water. Where it says the 1 though, we did cover a bit of 1 but we covered 1.1. We're now finishing off 1.2 to 1.12. And then we'll cover 2 and 4. But again, whatever we've missed out will be covered in phase three. Central eating, we're only covering the one part. We're just finishing learner outcome one, which is 1.2 to 1.13, because 1 1.1 was covered in phase one. So again, we're only taking a small chunk of this. We're not going mad. So don't go mad when you're teaching this. Just focus on what needs to be learned because of the end on exam and end on assessment. We go into rainwater systems now, but again, we're only covering a small segment of this in phase two because the rest is covered in phase three. So one, learner outcome one, learner outcome two, and learner outcome four. The rest will be covered in phase three. Now, sanitation, again, don't go mad. Don't think, yeah, I can just blitz for all the sanitation. I don't have to worry about it. It's a lot of information. They've got an exam, they have to pass. If you tell them everything, they'll just confuse themselves. Just stick with what is required. So you'd need learner outcome one, learner outcome two, and learner outcome four. The rest is covered in phase three. And as I say, don't go mad, don't try and cripple them, because they've also got little bits from phase one that they've done. So bear that one in mind. When it comes to the end on assessments, you have to, as I've said, You've got the end on exam, which is 0 to 1, and then you've got the phase 2 assessments. There is a few more assessments in this one. Unlike phase 1 where you only had the four assessments to complete, there is a few more and they're a little bit more difficult. In phase 1 you had the health and safety and the phase 1 end on exam to complete. On this one you've just got the one exam, so everybody is happy. So the exam itself, it is... 75 minutes in duration you've got to get approximately 60 percent member approximately it can change depending on how well people have been doing that year in the exam they may increase it they may decrease it it all depends on what your sittings guilds are saying now you've got 50 questions 75 minutes to answer them you can see on here already scientific principles you've got one question understanding properties of materials Two questions, understanding relationship of between energy, heat and power. Two, understanding the principles of force and pressure in relation to plumbing and heating. And then two more in understanding principles of electricity in the plumbing industry. Now, this is basic electricity. We're not going mad because main bulk of electricity is covered in phase three. 10 questions hot water, uh, cold water, 10 questions hot water, 13 questions on central eating. But if you've gone mad teaching central eating, you will confuse them and they will struggle. Uh, rainwater, they've got five. And sanitation, they have five questions, which gives you that grand total of 50 questions. Be sensible. Use this as a reference guide for when you're doing prep for the exam. There are mock tests that uh, City Girls do let us show, but they are very basic. Maybe try and make some of your own if you're a teacher. I've personally made a few up myself just to try and push them a little bit, but it's only on the core bits that are covered on this screen here. Then we have the assessments themselves. Now, these are bigger assessments. You've got 16 to 18 hours to complete these. If you do not complete them in this set time, you are failed, and then you have to retake them in 14 days. Please take this seriously if you are teachers, because the IQA is going to be coming, or is it EQA, sorry, EQA is going to be coming to visit, and they will be checking your evidence. So again, you can see on here, for cold water, you've got three parts to this assessment. 
Hot water, three parts to the assessment. Rain water, three parts to the assessment. Sanitation, three parts to the ass assessment. They're not big assessments. They're just awkward assessments. Um, you will understand these. The tutors will go through these as you go through, but they can. I can't go through on this screen. Hey, up, my little pointer's stuck. I can't go through what these assessments are. All the tutors can do is talk about it, and then you can see the assessments beforehand, and they'll get you ready for them. Because before you get to these assessments, you should have been doing your workbooks. There is a phase one, a phase two, and a phase three workbook, which you must work through, which the EQA will ask for for the tutors, as evidence that you have taught the students these things. So you can get the workbook on smart screen from City and Guilds. Unfortunately, you do have to pay for it, but it is well worth having and it stops any arguments then with the EQA. So a lot of assessments to do there. So in summary, you need to complete the exam and the assessment before you can move on to phase three. If you did fail both your first and your second go and say you've gone through the summer holiday, you can come back and start phase three, but you've still got to do the assessments, the exam after 60 days. So be good and study over your six, week, uh, your six weeks holiday. Don't just sit back on your laurels. You've got to get on this because remember, a few of your employees, employers, may not be happy that you're taking your first, your second, your third go to get past these assessments and the exams. There may be consequences to this, so bear that one in mind. I lost three of my apprentices last year because they didn't do as well and the, the employers didn't want to t risk taking them any further, so they lost their jobs. They've gone off and done other things, but they have lost their jobs, so bear that one in mind. Now, once you've completed phase one, phase two, phase three, and you've completed every task and every part of it, you can move on to phase four, then you must complete phase four. But this does not mean that you are a fully qualified plumber yet. You have what's known as an endpoint assessment that must be completed after your phase four. This is done by an independent assessor. It's like an ACS, so if you speak to your uh, tutors or your employer and ask what an ACS is, if they work with gas, they'll know. Uh, it's an as an assessment where it proves that you are competent. It is not done by your tutor, your teacher, so you can't think, oh, he's all right, he gets on with me, he lets me, he'll let me through. This is a completely independent assessor. They are checking that you have been taught this and that you do have the skills to call yourself a plumber. But once you qualify, you will be a fully qualified plumber. You will have your water regulations. You'll have your unvented certificate. And if you've done the gas safe bit or heat ass or off tech, you will have the relevant registration for that. OK. So that ends it. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if, again, if you have enjoyed this and found this video helpful, please remember to drop a like, leave a comment, even subscribe and help support the channel. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye bye.